Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, I uh, had a realization recently. Okay, here's the realization. I realized I do not have a homophobic bo bone in my body, no matter how many times I beg. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I gotta say, okay, first off, warning, this is going to be an ADD mess. It's all over the place. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> everybody thinks that like the new generation, the youngest generation, is the stupidest yet. But I submit to you, we as humans have always been that stupid. Back in like 1992, 93, I don't remember the exact date, and fuck research, who has time for that? Um, there, was a, uh, there was a blackout, California-wide. The whole state was black. No lights anywhere. 911 was inundated with calls. About the blackout? No. About worry, you know, fear? No. Everyone was worried about the mysterious lights in the sky. They had never seen the stars. <laughs> so, yeah, we've always been this stupid. So, okay, there's two things I want you to know about me. One, I'm pea shy. Two, I suck at transitions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> I want to tell you the story of my birth. Relax, I'm not going to tell you my whole life story. This is just an excerpt, okay? Also, just in case anyone's wondering, it's not a first-hand account. Um, my mother tried to cuss her way through childbirth, you know, to ease the pain or whatever. But my mother does not know how to cuss. In fact, she's dead set against it. So her word of choice was piddle fit, which is funny in itself because I, I have no clue what that means. <laughs> but every time like the pain would subside, you know, in between or whatever, she would apologize to the doctor for her foul language, <laughs> which the doctor thought it was absolutely hilarious. Now, okay, that tells you kind of who my mother is. Now skip ahead a little bit uh, to, uh, what was I, oh. What you have to understand also is my mother was so overprotected of me that until second grade, she would dress me and then wake me up for school. <laughs> kind of explains a bit, don't you think? Um, I can honestly say that roadkill saved my life. I can also honestly say that I've dated twins, but that's a story for another time. You're getting roadkill and you're going to like it. Um, <laughs> My, my step asshole uh, was drinking away our child support money. He had done it three times in a row, and we were starving. My mother started feeding us potato salad every meal because she knew that we wouldn't eat anything extra. We would only eat what we absolutely needed because none of us really liked it in the first place, which means she's smart, but evil. Um, and OK. One day, she was driving down the road, and she sees a deer jump into the road. She didn't bat an eye, she didn't take a deep breath, she didn't think about it. Pedal to the metal, she hit the deer with the full force of step assholes, prize dually. Totaling it in the process, we ate like kings for well over two months. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> okay, I feel like I have to say that I do have a father. What I don't have about him is uh, the stories. Um, but I'll tell you this about him. Oh, actually, first off, it was less than a year after the roadkill incident that my mother and my father got back together, and they've been together ever since. Aww. Okay. Um, but what, what you need to understand about my father is, okay, he is a certified welder, certified carpenter, certified air conditioner technician, certified millwright, I don't even know what the fuck that is. Um, the list goes on and on and on. But what he really wants to be, what he sits up at night and dreams about being, is a used car salesman. <laughs> yeah, that kind of tells you everything you need to know about my father. Um, Okay, remember what I said about transitions? Um, 
This is a piece that uh, I wrote specifically for this place. Um, with this place in mind, this is a place where shared pain is lessened, shared joy is increased. Um, and so I wrote this piece called Oversharing is Caring. <laughs> so strap in. Um, first off, you know what, everybody, repeat after me. Fuck anxiety. Anxiety. Feels good, don't it? Um, I have social anxiety disorder really bad. Uh, so bad that I am physically incapable of asking anybody out. Um, sucks to be me, no question. And uh, it, it can be frustrating because I'm not exactly picky. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, when it comes to who I'm attracted to, um, it, it's like that old hot dog commercial. Uh, okay, not to compare anyone to hot dogs, but um, uh, yeah, it's like the hot dog jingle. I like big girls, small girls, girls who climbs on rocks, tall girls, skinny girls, even girls with great big cocks. Oh wait, now the hot dog makes sense. Um, I was telling someone, a friend of mine that, uh, explaining that joke recently, uh, and uh, he said that what it sounded like to him was that I am attracted to the female soul, which is probably accurate and probably too beautiful a, a sentiment for, I mostly like women, but penises are interesting too. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, back to that thing about transitions. Uh, <laughs> I have a 60 pound Rhodesian Ridgeback. That's a dog breed for anyone that doesn't know. Uh, he is absolutely addicted to me. Um, and he was from the moment he saw me. He, he picked me from across the yard at work and uh, I happened to open my car door to put my lunch up for the end of the day, and he jumped in, and we've been friends ever since. Um, but anyway, he is so addicted to me. His favorite pastime is watching me watch TV. And every once in a while, I get the feeling that maybe he wants a little bit more out of our relationship that I'm willing to give. And um, yeah, it got really bad recently when he started bringing me that damn jar of peanut butter. No! No means no! Oh, okay. <laughs> That's my set. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>